ready to do this? I'm ready to do this. All right. Oh, my hands. Look at my hand, girl. What are you doing? Watch your hands now. <laughs> so this is a uh, highly controversial video, no, right? it's not. Uh -uh. <laughs> her it is. <laughs> no, it's not. I, like, uh, I don't really know how to explain it. It's a highly asked question, though, that we have. It is, and I think that there's a lot of value to the answer um, for people. I know it's something that we would have liked to have been able to watch, you know, years before we moved here so we could have known what we're preparing for. I think mm -hmm. the thing is, is that I'm just a little bit protective or very protective of Josh and how hard you have worked to get us here. And I don't like the idea of anybody, you know, undermining how much you've worked and sacrificed. That's all. Not a big deal. It's a big deal for me. Okay. Don't come for him in the comments. <laughs> okay, so, so what, you can't even tell him what we're doing. <laughs> so we made a video about a year and a half ago about how much the solar cost with the original system. Yes. So now it's part two because we've actually grown the system by three times the size. Yes. Our solar system now contains a solar array with 13.1 kW and a 6800 continuous running watt inverter. So we're going to do a solar breakdown what the entire solar system costs because that is a highly asked question. Yes. We've probably, since these latest solar videos have been going out, we'll probably get 10 of those questions per video. Yeah, a right? ton of them. With, with good reason. Yeah, people want to know. Yes. We wish we knew. Yes. So um, let's, uh, well, I guess first of all, um, what to preface this, we are not trying to like sell you guys on no. solar or tell you to go get solar, that it would be best for you or anything. This is just, you know, coming from our experience with solar and like why we chose solar, how it's worked out for us, what we paid, that sort of thing. So you can take that for what it is. Also, we're not affiliated with, you're going to hear us talk about Alt-E probably yeah. and Schneider. Um, Alt-E is the company that we went through to purchase everything. They've had great customer service. Yep. Uh, you can actually go onto their website where they have a load calculator. So you can put in, you know, what what you're running, how many hours. Yes, all your appliances. And they have, uh, I guess, examples of different appliances and how many watts they run. You can input those, how many hours per day. And then uh, you can add everything up and it uh, gives you your, your uh, I guess, so your kilowatt hours per day of use. And then you multiply that monthly and then give you the size of your system that you should need with the inverter and the size of your array. And you're going to go off grid like we are, mm -hmm. the size of your battery bank, depending on how many days you want to use your batteries for. Yes, so. and a lot of our equipment is Schneider. Our batteries are simplified, but yep. again, we're not affiliated or sponsored by any of those companies. I will at least link um, Alt-E for you guys though below in the uh, video description yeah, so, so that you can find it, it and get there. The huge question is, how do you guys know how to size your system properly? Yeah. Um, there's a load calculator. Yes. That's it. Super easy. Yeah. And they, they'll they tell you what you need. Um, and if you also call them too, and they'll, they'll help you out and tell you what you need. And they can pretty much build your system for you mm -hmm. so you know what components go with what so you're not left in the dark. Yeah. So, but um, keep in mind that we are off grid. So this is actually what jumped our price up significantly versus being a grid tied system mm -hmm. with your uh, panels on your roof or something like that. Yes which we'll get into more kind of uh, some of the, the variables and some of the miscellaneous items and whatnot, like batteries to yes. that, that sort of thing once we get through the cost of stuff. So where, where do we want to start? Do we want to start with the actual components that we have and the cost for each yes. of them? Yep. Can you go? Am I going to go? <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll go ahead. I'll um, read off what it is and the price, and then maybe you could just give more details into what each of them is. How about I read the, the, everything off in the price and you have details about how everything works. Well, that's fine since I am the <laughs> brains behind the operation, obviously. <laughs> okay, so we have a total of 32 solar panels. Yes. Um, am I going to say what, the, what the, each of them are? Like we have, uh, we have 12 hand wall solar panels. That are 385 watts each, and then we have uh, 20 more um, hand wall panels that are 425 no. watts each. Are they 425 watts each? Yes, they are. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. That's I'm here. <laughs> so many numbers. <laughs> so we have a total of uh, 32. 32 panels. So the, the original 12 panels we have is, uh, it's actually uh, string number one, and then we got uh, two more strings, so three strings of panels. So it's uh, 12 panels in the first string, second string is 10 panels, third string is uh, 10 panels. Yes, and what was the total cost on that? Um, $8,024. $8,064. <laughs> $8,064, so. 
It's a lot of money. Yes. So then, then we have the rails, yep. which is what is attaching the solar panels to our stanchion. Yes, that all came from Alti also. And those are the, 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 like she said, the rails that are going vertical on the horizontal pipe that we have and how your panels are bolted to it and those hold your panels in place. So the rails consist of the rails, obviously, all the pieces that go onto the uh, pipe and all the U-bolts and everything to uh, hold the panels in place. Yes. That's the entire thing turnkey. It's going to be what? Two thousand dollars. Two thousand bucks. That does not count the stanchion, though. No, which we'll get into. Yes. Let's go over the components first. Disconnects. We have four disconnects totaling in one thousand two hundred dollars. Yes. So we have a uh, disconnect out by the uh, solar array. And we had three disconnects going towards the powerhouse. The three are non-fused uh, NEMA three R thirty amp six hundred volt safe switches. The one over by the panels the only difference is that one it is fused with 15 amp fuses inside so a total of twelve hundred dollars yes and a quick side note we did round these numbers up so we're not dealing with you know like the change and whatnot that yep. goes along with these yep. okay combiner box a hundred dollars next combiner box is for string one um, because it's uh, 12 panels we actually uh, wired six in series six in series and we paralleled them in the combiner box that goes back to the charging drawer um, with charge controllers. We have three charge controllers. Yes. Total of $3,600. Yes. They're about $1,200 each. So it's a, a charge controller per string. So string one, string two, string three, hence three charge controllers. Um, you can say something? I was going to go to the next one. Are you ready for the next one? Yes, I am. One inverter, $3,000. Yes, so it's a uh, 6,800 watt inverter. And I guess a lot of questions are, as people said, you're uh, your uh, solar panels are 13,000 watts combined, but your inverter is 6,800 watts, so it's too small. That's not the case. The panels are for charging and use. So the uh, 6,800 watt number is the load that's able to come out and us use for the house. Mm -hmm. um, so, I'm gonna put this easily. Um, if I'm running, say if I had cut, take two. Get your cookies. <laughs> so, our inverter is uh, 6,800 watts. Our solar array is uh, 13,000 watts. People said it's, uh, it's, the panels are too big for the inverter. That's not the case because the inverter, the load allowed out, um, continuous load is 1,600 watts. Um, so if I'm running, say, a load of, uh, say, 6,000 watts on the inverter, um, with my original one string of uh, 12 panels was uh, 4.6 kW, so it's 4,600 watts. That's the max at, at high sun I can get out of those panels. So, if I was using 6,000 watts, I'm bringing in 4.6 thousand watts, the rest is going to come off the batteries. I'm using all those, that wattage, all that power, plus I'm drawing off the batteries. Um, I can still draw more with my inverter, but the reason why we went bigger is because I can actually now bring, as a, at a max, at 13,000 watts coming in, I can burn that 6,000 watts from using it on the inverter and charge the batteries at the same exact time. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. So, and also with uh, low sun hours, um, to say my original array at 4.6 is operating at uh, 50% because it's overcast. So I'd be, say, 2,300 watts would be coming in. But now that I have three strings, I can bring, bring it in over 6,000 watts coming in with, those low, with the, with the uh, overcast. So that's why our array is so big. Mm -hmm. um, the array is not what allows you to use your load on your inverter. The, the, the load on the inverter is 6,800 watts that I can use at a max of continuous. Uh, that inverter also is uh, you can surge it at, I think, 7,500 watts for a half hour, and also surges at 12,000 watts for one second. Mm -hmm. So if it run a bunch of things, say my well pump kicks on, and it spikes up real quick, I can hit 12,000 watts for a second, and it comes back down. Does that make sense? Yeah. Hope it's, uh, hope it's okay. We've never maxed it out. We never have. No. No. I think we, in the last video, we went mm -hmm. through, and uh, I think we hit around 53 or 5,400 watts. I've never seen that thing that high before. We're just, we never, there's no need for us to be running all, I mean, we were actually like plugging stuff in like the air compressor and stuff, trying to like get it, get it up there. But we don't run like all these things at once to where we're maxing it out. No, it's 35 degrees outside, that's so why we're doing filming inside too. Yes. I don't know if you can see, turn to the side there, <laughs> that stove, the fans, those fans run off the heat of the uh, stove and they're not spinning. So that means there's no fire there. Right. We're actually running on electric heat in the house. Yes. Had two split systems running. It's nice and warm in here. I'm actually sweating a little bit with my, uh, <laughs> with my flannel on. That's why hair's in a short sleeve I shirt. I think that's why you're try trying to remember all those numbers is making you sweat. <laughs> the nice thing about this is we can cut down on how much firewood we need. Yes. You know? Yeah. It's really nice. Or if we're gone, we don't have to worry about having a fire running in the house while we're not here. Yep. So, it's pretty sweet. It is. Okay, 
Where were we? Inverter. Okay, so mini power distribution panels, six hundred dollars. And that is what's below our uh, inverter. It has the that's where all the uh, the wires that come from the charging controller and go into the bus bars and everything, and all the breakers, all that stuff's down there. It's just it's bolts to the bottom of the inverter. It's just power coming in and power coming out. That's all it is. Batteries. The batteries. So we've made, uh, I guess, our first purchase of batteries. I guess for the last video we did, yes. we use uh, Tesla Model S batteries. Mm -hmm. We quickly got rid of those. We sold those and went to the uh, Simplify batteries. Mm -hmm. the, I guess the biggest, the biggest reason for that change was because we didn't have a battery monitoring system with those batteries and those Tesla batteries. They don't have a BMS on them. Um, they can have thermal runaway and they can burn, catch on fire and burn the place down. And that's it was for us it was a huge risk. So yes. we. Uh, Sold those and we went to uh, Simplify. Mm -hmm. We've made uh, over the past uh, what, two years mm -hmm. or maybe a year and a half, we've made uh, multiple purchases on batteries as uh, money allowed. So. Yes, because they're expensive. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the first three batteries we did buy from Simplify, um, they're $2,800 each and that comes out to being uh, $8,400. Yes. Um, now the batteries are actually $2,500. So they actually went down in price $300 per battery. We bought three more, and it's actually seventy-five hundred dollars for a grand total of what? Do the math, babe. Fifteen thousand dollars, right? What is it? Fifteen thousand, roughly. 16, Not roughly. I mean, I want it on 15, the dime, Josh. Fifteen nine. Okay, but you had to sit there and think about it. So. I have to add it up real quick, you know? Yeah, well, me too. I have an, I have an audience and everything. You know? <laughs> no wonder you're sweating. But, but there's no thermal runaway with those batteries. Um, yeah. They're great. Yes, and we do plan on building onto that battery bank again. Yeah. As time and finances allow. That's the one spot on the system I believe that we are lacking on yeah. is a bigger battery bank, mm -hmm. but we will, like she said, grow it when time comes. Battery monitor, $360. Yes, um, and what the, all that is, it pretty much uh, monitors all the voltages um, on the ends of the batteries and also in the middle of the battery. So it can measure all the batteries as one big battery bank and it pretty much talks to the inverter, the charge controllers and all, everything works in unison. And that's what matters, monitors the battery. That's actually different than the BMS, the battery monitoring system, inside the batteries. Yes. It's different. Yeah. Um, system control panel, $210. That's a little button you guys see me pushing to uh, pretty much go through all the uh, functions on the system. I can pretty much monitor everything from that control panel. Combox, $190. That thing lets us um, pretty much tie into the internet so we can get onto a... Uh, I guess a app and have internet on there so we can monitor our system that way or also uh, do downloads or uploads um, to uh, different, uh, what is it called? I don't know, but we are gonna have everything inside this house right now. We haven't run it through here, the pipe is in, but we're gonna have so that we can actually monitor everything from inside here or like yeah. you said, you could put it on your um, iPad. Yeah, or we can di put different firmware on there as I guess things change with uh, Schneider. That's what it's for. Lightning arresters. Three, $120. Yes, and those are the little things we uh, next to our charge controllers are tie-in, so if we get hit by lightning, that's supposed to uh, save the system. We'll see. <laughs> we'll let you know. <laughs> I know when lightning hits stuff, it tears things yeah. apart. That's all I know. That little thing, uh, we'll see if it works or not. Okay, so what we've gone over so far is the major components of the system. So the grand total of what we went over so far is about $36,000. Yes, um, the biggest thing for those is the batteries. But um, that's not counting all the fuses, and all the small nuts and bolts, and uh, the small miscellaneous things like uh, MC4 cable. That's all that extra stuff that came from Alti. It was like, about $36,000. We didn't do right. all that. Yes, yes. So we didn't mix in all of those little things that also came from, from Alti. That was just the major stuff. Um, so now let's talk about the miscellaneous costs that are also not a part of that. That's going to be things like all the equipment rentals, the battery racks. Um, the stanchion. The wire the trough, yep. the concrete, the actual delivery costs. Yeah, I think the delivery cost was over a thousand bucks. Yes. Just to get all the solar components here. Yes. It all came out on freight. So we are not going to break this down into each little one of those. No. Um, this is going to vary depending on everybody's situation because you might not have like a 400 foot run from your yeah. panels to wherever your components are. You might put it on your roof, yep. then you don't need a stanchion, then you don't need equipment to trench everything in, then you don't need that pipe, you wouldn't need as much wire. Yeah. So there's a lot of things that could be different for your situation um, versus ours. Mm -hmm. and another cost that you're not gonna hear us talk about is the labor, because I just so happen to have- Be the grunt. <laughs> I happen to be married <laughs> to an electrician, thank goodness, who's able to 
to do all of this. So. Yeah, like she says. So if you're to boat your panels on the side of your house, you would not need a stanchion. Um, that stanchion is, is very expensive. Yes. You have galvanized pipe going to the ground. It's hundreds of feet of pipes of three inch. It's all rigid, so it's very expensive. A few thousand dollars on that alone. Yes. Um, then also digging in 400 feet to the powerhouse, mm -hmm. we're, for, we, we're surrounded by trees. So we actually put in the middle of our pasture. Um, we trenched in 400 feet. So talk about, talking about uh, cost for a rental fee for that. Yes. Um, also a rental fee for uh, boring the holes into the ground yes. with the uh, auger and the uh, bobcat. So that, that's big, big numbers there. It is. Plus Josh says that he might have gone a little bit overboard on the way that he did things in the powerhouse. Definitely did. But that's just because... Yeah, he likes things a specific way. <laughs> I'm a commercial like, electrician, so we did, did it commercial, like, like, like I should be installed in my opinion. Um, <laughs> you could actually run cables through and do things a lot differently than I did, but I wanted it that way. It looks better that way. It's beautiful. I love it. You did a great job. Thank you. Um, but if you did everything like Aaron said on the side of your house, yeah. all, all you're going to be paying for is the racks and it bolts your house. And, and we included that price of the rails for us at least, yeah. which was in our initial um, rundown of components. So yeah, you wouldn't have that stanchion cost. So um, can you think of anything else miscellaneous to add to that or should we just go to the cost? Um, all of our cost. miscellaneous costs ended up adding up to another $6,000. Yeah. So that's going to bring everything to a grand total of $42,000, 100% for everything Said and done. that we did. Yes. So at the, I believe the first year we uh, ordered it, we had a 30% tax credit. Mm -hmm. And I guess the, for this uh, past year, we, did, we bought in two stages. Yes. Um, we built the first stage two years ago mm -hmm. and just recently built the second stage of this. Um, and it's a 28% tax credit. Mm -hmm. So I just averaged it out to be in 29% tax credit. And... Uh, we didn't put that on here. Yes, I did. At, after tax incentives, it took us down to $29,800. Call it oh, but call it 30000 to just make it easier for everybody. So say it takes us down to $30,000 after you include those tax incentives. Yep. So when, when we moved here, um, we had the perfect spot for the house. Yes. There's no power around anywhere. No. Um, actually, about a half mile of that way. Mm -hmm. um, had the power company come out here. We talked to them. We walked the property. The first 1,000 feet for them was free. So that counts cable. Um, the rest of the is on our, our dime. Yes. So when for them to have labor come out, pull the wire, um, or they could do poles. They didn't want poles coming through the pasture. No, no, no. So it was going to be around $15,000 just for their wire and their labor to pull everything around 15 k That does not count for me renting a machine and digging in. Their, uh, they want a three-inch pipe, and every 500 feet they wanted a, uh, a hand hole. So that didn't count any of that stuff. So yes. It would have been over $15,000. It would have been over $15,000. So that we were in it for $15,000 regardless of which direction we went. If we went on grid or if we went off grid, there was going to be $15,000 yes. or more, I guess, because that doesn't include all the extras with uh, the power company. So yeah. we were going to be in it for $15,000 regardless. So again, this is where it gets personal to our particular situation. We go ahead and we're you know, including that in what our final cost breakdown is that we were going to have $15,000 put in. So if you include that in there, then that knocks us down to what? 15,000. 15K. Yeah. So that brings us down to $15,000 yes. that we have invested. Yes. Then. Yep. Including that. So then we're going to go back and calculate what we expected our monthly utility bill expense to be had we gone on grid and we're basing this off of our previous home um, it averaged out to be about $250 a month we would have of course some months that were higher and some months that were lower but it averaged out to be about $250 a month which comes out to be $3,000 a year that we would be paying to the power company had we gone on grid yes so that's a five year return yes so recoup our investment to five years. If uh, you want to put that extra $15,000 in, we would have to pay the power company, it would be 10 years. So yeah. still, it's, it's, it's still, we make our money back eventually and we don't have any, uh, any monthly bills. Yes, plus we also just, we, we don't have the, the power company with rights onto our property. We have energy independence, which is important to us. And uh, what do you think? We have a kid right there. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to ignore him. I looked at you and I could see your face looking right on. I completely lost my train of thought. Okay, one second. <laughs> you want to say hi? Hi. <laughs> Sorry.
Sorry. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. Where are we at? I think that I was just saying, um, now Frank's in here too. It's okay. <laughs> I have no idea. I was basically just saying that we, that energy independence is important to us and we have that and we kind of want to be able to rely on ourselves for as many things as possible, whether it's, you know, our electricity or our water or our skill set, developing mm -hmm. one to be able to build things we might need or fix things we might need or raise as much of our own food as possible. It's just yes. one of our personal goals and this is part of it. Yeah. So I, mean, I remember like a few years ago before we moved here, my friend, uh, we had a massive snowstorm back in Virginia, and my friend happened to be the only house on the transformer. I mean, there are transformers out everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, blew up, power lines down, um, and it took about two weeks for them to actually, he was actually the last man on the list because his one transformer right there controlled his house only. And they were going around to get all the transformers that actually can, were hitting more houses. So he actually took about two weeks for them to get the power back on, and he had to stay in a hotel for about two weeks. Yeah. And also, I was looking back at Texas last week too, it was um, we're energy independent. We are. We're not worried about anybody else. Yes. And along Which with that, great. we also want other systems. So if, if, I mean, we also have a backup generator, yes. you know, which is another system in place, but say that both of those were to go out. I mean, that's one of the reasons we want to install an outdoor, um, wood burning stove. Yes. Cause even if this one, if something happened to this one right here, like we are still able to heat our home, we'd be able to heat our hot water. Um, we can do those sorts of things. So we do want to put in place as time goes along other mm -hmm. systems, like an outdoor, um, wood cook stove. That we could cook on right now we could also cook on this one and it's got an oven capability but we're just taking things in steps and uh be more self-sufficient not to rely on the man for anything we rely on ourselves yes and uh we're free that way yes it does right. it feel it gives us a sense of freedom yep for sure does. but something that we didn't go over yet is the life of the system yes so that's important i think that's something people are going to wonder about so let's just start with the panels the panels are warranted for 25 years they are. So after 25 years, they're still going to be good. They're still going to work. They should be around 80% in life. So uh, they, when you first get them, there, you're charging around 100%. Um, after 25 years, they should still be able to charge up around 80%. Yeah. So they still work. Um, but who knows? 25 years from now, those panels might be half the size. And if they're half right. the size, half the size and probably a quarter of the price because prices are coming down. Yes. So who knows? We might just take those panels out put new ones up, have double the array mm -hmm. um, at that same footprint. We'll and see. And a good example of that, I know you had mentioned the batteries, but with the panels, the the new panels that we bought, the extra 20 that we most recently got, they're the same price as the original panels with a higher wattage. Yeah, yeah, So and same size too. And that's that's just in a short time span. Like two years. Two years, yeah. yeah, a year and a half, two years. So it is steadily coming down. So the batteries, we have Simplify batteries. Um, do you want to talk about that? You know better than I do. Yeah, so um, if you treat the batteries properly, um, I think they're warranted for like 10,000 cycles if you uh, don't go below 80% depth of discharge. Mm -hmm. um, the batteries are able to go through down to 100%. You can burn them 100%, but they, it dramatically uh, reduces the life cycles. I think it's still 3,500 life cycles if it goes down to 100%. So what I'm getting at is if you stay at 80% or above, we should keep these batteries for 15, 20 years without a problem. Yes. And then again, it's going to be interesting to see where the price of solar is in the near future. That's Frank. <laughs> Do you guys hear? <laughs> hey, Frankie. <laughs> so that's that. What else do we have? Just that, that we didn't buy it all, all at once. No. We, um, we took it in steps, but we did make sure to uh, start with something that we could build onto rather than just going with something really small off the mm -hmm. get-go that could just get us by because... We wanted to be able to reuse things. We didn't want to have to get rid of everything and buy something that was completely new. Yeah. So we, we bought in stages and we're still doing that. Like we mentioned with the batteries, we're still, we're going to be adding on to that, but those are yep. very expensive and just like, as time goes along, we're going to sign on to them. Say, say you like solar, but going off grid is not your thing. You could actually have our system for a half the price we pay for it because you can do a grid tied system with no batteries and mm -hmm. you'd be able to recoup your money in probably five or six years with that. Mm -hmm. The most expensive thing for us is the uh, batteries. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, so that, that's a pro cost-wise, yeah. but what, what would potentially be a con of grid tie? That's not, I mean, if, you, if your power goes out from the power company, I think power goes out, I believe, right? I, I think that that's the case. You'll, you'll have to look into that because we're not obviously grid tied, so we don't know for sure, but I was under the impression that since you don't have a way to store 
that for, for night for for nighttime yes it definitely goes out i'm yes. not sure if the sun shine and power goes down if you have power or not i have no idea but yeah. if it happens at night you have no power because there's no storage there. right so it's something to consider but also look into that because we also don't really don't really know what that is that's it that's it that's it in the video in the video i don't got anything else um if you got any questions let us know we are going live again here in a couple days <laughs> yes we are we're going live again on um on Friday, it's been it's been a great way for us to just be able to directly get the questions from you guys yes. and respond to them because a lot of the times in um, in the videos, it's it's just hard to stay on top of the videos. I even I think it was Craig had asked us a question and I didn't see his question come in on one of our videos um, or I would have answered it, but I I can't stay on top of the comments across all different like platforms and whatnot. And then I asked him to ask the question again and then I actually had to go back and like search to find the reply. It can just get messy sometimes. So if you do have a question and you are able to join us live, a lot of the times it's just easier because it comes in in real time and we can just Hit answer it. Hit real quick. It. Yes. yes. So join us. I'll leave the link below for that. Use my link. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's it. Thanks right, for watching, guys. See ya. <laughs> Big Frank. Is he your favorite? No. Come here. I got Chucky and Honey Bee. Right, Frankie? I know. I know. Chuck was the OG, okay? Chuck's the Pug Ranger. <laughs>